is latest and greatest, the new MXS dash logger. So let's see what we get in the box. Race Studio 3, latest version, obviously updated online a lot. Hefty manual, upselling of the products. Two Deutsche connectors on the back. Um, the first one being your power, your RPM feeds, your speeds for the analog channels, and your can link. And then the second for the second can link. Protective cover on it currently. We'll whip that off in a minute. That's that. Decent packaging on it. Uh, lots in here. What have we got? GPS module is standard. So that's for your lap timing, it does predictive lap timing, etc. USB cable for programming, although it is Wi-Fi enabled, they just haven't released the software yet. So for now you have to use a USB cable. All your your main harness. Looks like it only comes with the main harness, not the secondary harness. You have to buy that separately. But the main harness still has Four analog channels, your optical laps, um, and your expansion ports. So that's what we are there. I say the main unit here is a nice size. Let's take off the protective cover. And there we go. That's the unit itself. This one being the 5 inch display, you can get the humongous 7 inch display um, if you go for the MXG, but I went for this size, I think it's uh, much more appropriate for where we're going with it. So let's get some power on this thing. Okay, now that we've uploaded the configuration, done the firm up, let's apply some power and see how everything is looking here. That's the boot up screen. An example of a full screen warning which is already pre-programmed into it and there we are that's one of the screens is the sensors aren't hooked up we're getting some blank readings on things like gear RPM I will see the other things that aren't hooked up here you can also see the warning line at the bottom you can set up alarms that either pop up the full screen one or that pop up the warning on the bottom. These alarms can be set to stay until the condition clears or until you press a button. Similarly you've got six LEDs. All these LEDs can be programmed to be any color. They can be programmed to flash, flash fast, or to stay on continuously. So for example here that is for a low water temperature. So I've got an alarm that says when it's low water temperature and an alarm that says when it's high water temperature. So all these are configurable. As are the shift lights, they can be cumulative or they can follow. And again, all the colors are completely definable. So if we uh, step through the screens, that would be the next one that's loading is the lap timing screen. So this would have laps um, and predictive lap timing on it. That's just another screen with a circular dial that I wanted to experiment with. I, don't think I'll use this one, but it was just seeing what it looks like. Here's another screen option. Again, you'd have a very large gear indicator in the middle here is the idea with that one. And then various, set these up as check screens. So you can go through everything on the ECU uh, because it'll be using a CAN link to get all that information. And back to what I'll probably use as a standard screen. So next step is to put this into the car. So one that I did notice that was a nice touch was your USB. Uh, they provided as a waterproof bulkhead mount, and it's also 
standard mini USB connector rather than a proprietary connector which is always great so if you do lose the USB cable it's a trip to the computer shop rather than waiting on AIM to send you out a new one so that's always appreciated. Some other aspects that I had purchased just to make things easier were patch cables so these are your usual binder connectors that the AIM equipment uses that just allows you to extend any external sensors which is always very useful along with they were kind enough to provide the raw binders so when I get the analog sensors for oil pressure and fuel pressure you can wire straight onto these extend your cables and then go straight into the actual plugs on the back of the system itself so when you have the primary wiring harness you can go straight into these that's all useful and then the final one was the remote push button interface. The idea being behind this is for steering wheel buttons. So rather than have to touch the dash, you can simply press the buttons on the steering wheel. Plugs into your loom here and you set up your buttons here. Um, the idea being is when I mount this, the way that I'm going to mount this, it's going to be behind the dashboard. So the buttons are actually going to be hidden with cutouts for the alarms and the shift lights. So that's the remote push button interface from AIM. I guess you could wire this yourself, but you know, by the time you spend doing those things, a lot of the time it's just easier to go straight out and buy the equipment.